Hey folks, Jim Johnson here. Uh, this will be the second video in my uh, Scrivener Tutorials uh, series. Um, I've struggled, I, I just had lunch with my wife and I, I was struggling to think about how I was going to format this video because uh, on the one hand I want to show you more about Scrivener but I also want to talk about my outlining process and how that relates to the project file that I use in Scrivener. And uh, this is also all related to the writing challenge that I'm starting today, uh, three novels in three months. 3,000 words a day, so you know 90,000 words a month, and how I'm going to be uh, riding toward that, working on this new um, urban fantasy series. And so um, this video is probably going to be a mishmash of uh, Scrivener functionality and also just how I write, how I outline, because I know that uh, a lot of writers, uh, whether you're just starting out or you've been um, at this for a while, um, you like to hear about how other writers do things and how they make their sausage, basically. Um, we won't talk about slaughtering the cow, but we'll talk about making the sausage. You know, we all approach writing a little differently, and uh, so this is my 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 go at it. And uh, I think I've got all the files I need here on the computer. I wish there was a way that I could figure out how to make QuickTime switch between um, the camera looking at me versus just recording the screen, but I haven't figured it out yet. So if you if you know something about QuickTime or a better software package that I can use to make these videos, please let me know in the comments section or uh, send me an email or hit my website. Or um, I'm also on Kboards all the time, so uh, hit, hit me up over there if you want. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm just going to open up the project file that I created in the first video, which uh, you can link to through my uh, YouTube channel. Um, and once I figure out a little bit more about YouTube, I can probably link it within the video itself. But not there yet. I'm, I'm learning as I'm going. So I'm just going to open up the uh, project file we created earlier. So it's called Challenge. So this uh, dumped us right into where we left off. Um, whenever you save a, a project file, whatever you happen to have open at the time is where you will start um, when you next open it up. So uh, that's nice uh, because it's um, it's kind of just kind of um, you you save it off where you stop and then you open it up and you're right where you left off. It's it's really convenient um, if you are a the type of writer who likes to just um, hit the ground running the beginning of the day or beginning of your writing session or sprint or whatever how it is you like to write um, you just open it up boom you're off and running so here's the uh, the series bible that we put together earlier in uh, video one and I'm just going to continue working on this here in uh, video two and uh, also talk about my uh, my outlining process now like I said I can't figure out how to switch between the screen and, and video but um, the two most important tools that I use as a writer. Uh, number one is a, a cheap dig digital voice recorder that I bought at Target for like, I don't know, 20 bucks or something. I mean, it's it's just a really cheap Sony digital voice recorder. In fact, it's, it's so old school that I can't even plug it into a computer to download the MP3 files. Basically, it's just, it's just record, play, and then delete the files. So what I end up doing, um, I, I currently have a job that's about 40 minutes away. So I commute um, about an hour and a half every day. Um, except Tuesdays, obviously. Tuesdays are my work from home day. And um, so I drive an hour and a half every day. And uh, I'm always dictating notes and story ideas and thoughts into this voice recorder. And then when I have some free time, either at work or at home, um, I transcribe the relevant notes. You know, I listen to the recording again and listen to the relevant notes. Um, I mean, I'm sorry. I, I listen to the recording, jot down, you know, type in the relevant notes. And then I delete the recording and then just re repeat the process as I, uh, as I go. So, um, so yeah, so the first most important tool is my digital voice recorder. And uh, my second one is my AlphaSmart Neo. Now, the AlphaSmart Neo is basically an electronic typewriter that has uh, no internet capability, no Wi-Fi, not really much of anything to it other than being able to type into it and have it save the uh, file. It has um, eight different files that you can swap back and forth from. And each file can hold, I don't know, 30 or 40,000 words. I haven't really tested the upper limit because I'm, I, I, uh, once I finish a chapter or a scene, I, um, I plug the, uh, the Neo into my computer with a USB cable and just dump the, the text off of the Neo onto the computer. And uh, at some point, I'll probably show you how that works here um, <clears throat> to some extent. But um, so I've had the Neo for probably... 10 years and in in my 10 years of writing in that time I mean, I've been a writer for 20 some years but in the 10 years that I've had the Neo I've written probably 95% of all of my drafts on it uh, short stories novels novellas 
uh, probably in excess of 2.5 to 3 million words, probably more. I, I've certainly lost count um, over the years, but just a lot of stuff. And that, that is my number one draft machine. Um, it's, it's not really designed for editing and the display window on it is so small that you can only see like five or six lines of text at a time. So it's not, I, I, I've, I've learned how to write in sprints of about 30 minutes a piece. And um, if those of you that are following uh, Chris Fox or Kevin McLaughlin's uh, 21 Day Challenges right now, and I'll include those links in the video description uh, just so you can follow along and, and understand where my, my, uh, my groundwork is for this particular challenge, <clears throat> is, um, you know, ah, you know what, I lost, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> so let's uh, say so I was talking about uh, words a day using the Neo. So this is why you should never record a video stream of consciousness. You should always have an outline in your hand uh, as opposed to just making it up off the cuff like I'm doing right now. So I may have to start this over, but I hope not. Um, shoot, I think I lost my train of thought. <laughs> so forgive me, um, I, I can't edit this out either because uh, I don't know how. Anyway, so uh, anyway, so the Neo is um, probably even more so than the digital voice recorder. The Neo is my most important writing tool because I have gotten so used to it as my uh, sprint machine. Oh, sprints is what we were talking about. Uh, sprint writing. So um, I write in 30 minute sprints and I write anywhere from 800 to 1200 words per sprint. So that's, you know, about 2000 words an hour if I were to write for an hour. But I, as I've gotten older, I'm, uh, I'm going to be 46 this year. As I've gotten older, I've discovered that if I spend too much time at the computer, uh, at the keyboard, uh, my back starts to hurt, my hands start to hurt, my neck starts to hurt, you know, the, the body's getting older and doesn't like that repetitive stress. You know, so um, I've taught myself over the last couple of years to write in 30-minute sprints, and uh, I write as much as I can, as fast as I can, in that 30 minutes. And uh, whenever the time, I, I use a timer, whether it's my my phone timer or a uh, an old school uh, uh, kitchen timer. Um, as soon as that timer goes off, I stop. I get up. I get away from the computer. I get away from the keyboard. I stretch. I grab a, a glass of water or um, some iced tea or something. Uh, maybe maybe a snack or something, and then I, I give myself at least 10 to 15 minutes away from the from the keyboard, and then when I get ready to start the next sprint, I'm back at the computer. I hit the timer and I'm going, and uh, I've gotten to the point where when I know I have uh, a half an hour to write, I can get on that sprint and just go, and uh, it's almost like a switch that turns on and off as needed. You know, I don't. I, I've, I've gotten away from staring at the computer screen, you know, staring at the blank cursor, wondering when inspiration is going to strike, you know. Um, and you're going to see this in my, in my outlining process. You know, when I outline a book, um, I have an idea of what's going to happen in each, each scene or chapter so that when I sit down to start writing, I can grab one of those scene or chapter descriptions and just be off and running because I, I know exactly where I'm going. And uh, sometimes a sprint will not, uh, you know, I won't write a complete chapter or scene in one sprint. So I'll kind of stop midway, which is great because then when I come back to, to finish that chapter in the next sprint, I already know where I am. So I'll, I'll review what I wrote and then hit the ground running and just blast off and, and finish off that scene. And then if I finish off a scene or chapter in the middle of a sprint, then I can just go to the, to the next one. Um, and just keep going and just keep writing, right? So there's no there's no starting or stopping. That that 30 minutes is a block of time that is all for new writing. It's not editing. It's not revising. It's not uh, uh, checking email or the internet. It's it's just pure pure writing. And with the Neo, particularly, this is why I love it as a draft machine. Uh, the Neo has no internet capability, no games, no nothing. The only other thing on it, other than the word processor, is um, a calculator. And there's not really many games you can play with a calculator until you're bored to tears and you need to actually get to writing. So so the Neo is, is my fabulous distraction-free writing machine and uh, I'd say if there's any one tool I've used over the last 10 years that has been essential to my development as a writer, it's got to be the Neo. Um, and then, you know, as a supplemental tool, the, uh, the voice recorder. And then lately, uh, it's been Scrivener because the uh, Scrivener's and this is, we'll finally get to the topic of the video here. Uh, Scrivener is, is so good at helping me develop an outline 
and, and, and plot development and series building and all that good stuff that um, I, I don't know what I would do without it. And I want to just give you an understanding, because I don't think I really covered this in the first video, but something that Scrivener does, and this is one of the key features of Scrivener, I think, is when you have Scrivener, um, where can I do this? I'll, I'll open up my folder here. And I just want to show you. So you, you know how in traditional, whether you're using a PC or a Mac, you know, you've got folders that you write, and then within those folders, you've got just a dump of information, right? You've got uh, documents, PDFs, images, movies, whatever, into the, each of those folders. And so you might have, depending on how organized or not organized you are, you might have 30 or 40 or 50 different folders with hundreds and hundreds of files that are either sorted into folders or just randomly randomly thrown together or whatever. Like, like this is pretty much a mess right now because I'm, I'm still in the process of converting over from PC to Mac, and I haven't really had a, a lot of time recently to sit down and... Uh, and organize my files on the Mac uh, other than to just you know pull stuff off my thumb drive and dump it on here just so I had them accessible to work with um, and you can see there's just all kinds of stuff here and what Scrivener does specifically for your writing is takes that folder and file concept and in just one file uh, one big file so like you'll see right here it's a, it's a .scriv file like this thing right here you open up that one file and it contains uh, Mac is over here, right? Yeah. So er that contains everything, all the files, all the folders. So instead of trying to go through my hard drive and finding what specific files and folders I was using for those different pieces, it's all here. It's all laid out. So, you know, ideally my hard drive folders would someday be structured like this, but what Scrivener does so well is it, 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 it brings that structure into play, right? Oh, you know what? I need to minimize this again because I need to get access to that other file. Um, let me just blow this up a little bit here. Oh, Mac. So I, um, <clears throat> so you can see here, you know, I've got all these buckets of data that I'm going to start plugging in, and uh, it's all here. It's all in one file, so it makes it super easy to access. Like if I if I wanted to jot down some notes, then you know, I just open up the one project file, I put the notes in here. And then it's always here, um, which is you know just awesome for my sakes. So basically, where where we are now is um, I am about to start outlining. It, as I mentioned in the first video, I am transitioning from PC to Mac, and um, I need to uh, put all my files over here. I'm turning my music down just a little bit. There we go. Hopefully that's not too loud for you guys, um, but I'll find out in the in the replay. Um, but so I'm starting this uh, challenge today, and I, I don't know, because I, I kind of ran out of time in February, even with the extra day, and um, I'm kind of thinking I, I don't know if I'll get to the actual manuscript writing today, like the first couple sprints today, or if I'll maybe start tomorrow, or um, at lunch I was thinking that it'd be fun to, uh, to start on March 3rd, because it's uh, uh, 3,000 words a day, three novels in three months, starting on March 3rd. Um, and then if you really want to get into the numerology, 2016, 6 plus 1 plus 2 is 9 divided by 3 is 3. So, uh, I don't know, any numerologists out there want to tell me what that means, go for it. But uh, I'm hoping to start um, writing this afternoon, uh, this afternoon this evening. I've got um, a free evening for the most part after we pick up my son from daycare and, um, and have dinner and stuff. But uh, anyway, so let's, let's talk about outline. So what I've done up to this point... And uh, I'm trying to walk it through so you, that you understand how me or how I how I work as a writer, just you know, for in, inspirational purposes, uh, idea generation. Um, maybe you just want to hear about a different writer's process, um, because this is just going to be the first of many videos, and on the first day of the next three months, where I, at hopefully the end product at the end of uh, what uh, May is going to be three full-length novels in an urban fantasy series that I'll start publishing probably June 1 is when the first, is when I'm targeting the first one to come out. Now, that's really ambitious, and some of you will say, well, how in the world are you going to write uh, 270,000 words over the course of three months? You know, that's just crazy. No one can do that. Sure, people do it all the time. It's just a matter of um, commitment and time management and, uh, and wanting to do it. So that's the important things. 
Um, now, unlike you know, those of you who are following Chris Fox and Kevin McLaughlin, um, I would say that I'm probably more in the Kevin mold than the Chris mold, only because I, I still work a full-time job. I work a 45 to 50 hour day job, or a 45 to 50 hour a week job, um, in addition to the uh, hour and a half commuting every day, plus uh, approximately 10 hours a week of volunteer work, uh, either at my church or through uh, the Science Fiction Writers of America, uh, CIFWA. Um, I'm a volunteer moderator on their discussion forums. And uh, so between the volunteer time and the work and, and the time I'm putting in toward, I, I consider publishing and writing a full-time job as well. So basically I'm working two, two full-time jobs, um, helping my wife to raise our son, uh, who's uh, just uh, almost five and a half months now. Uh, so he's, a, he's a, a double handful, but such a joy. And uh, hopefully I'll be able to say that in a few years. <laughs> um, anyway, so my, my point being is I have a very busy life even outside of writing. And I know that there are writers out there who are even busier than I am. In fact, Kevin, I think, has, has mentioned on his blog that he's quite busy and has like 17, 18 hour days, which is uh, just crazy in my world because uh, I, I, am, I am blessed to have a full time job. Well, A, I'm blessed to have a full time job at all. But I'm blessed to have a full-time job that, in general, um, I don't have to bring home with me, you know, except on Tuesdays, Tuesdays, which happens to be my work-from-home day. Um, and I'm extraordinarily blessed that right now we are in kind of a, a valley of work. You know, we uh, my particular job has peaks and valleys, and we are in a bit of a valley right now. So I have my, uh, you can't see it, but I have my work laptop uh, sitting right next to me, and I'm monitoring email and um, um, uh, instant messaging, and uh, there's nothing going on. It's quiet right now, so I am, I am taking advantage of the time to, uh, to work on this video. And um, uh, Anyway, so you're wondering, okay, he's going to keep rambling on all day. When is he going to get to the meat of the matter here? And so the outline, and what I'm trying to get at is that as a full-time writer and a full-time job, you know, I, I know that I am able to write upwards of three to 5,000 words a day, even though I've got all these other commitments on my time. And if you think, if, if you're hearing that and you're like, I can't possibly do that, um, I'm, I'm here to tell you that you really can if you want to, if you want to put the time and the work in. And I know it's hard. It's really hard. It, it's taken me years to get to this point where I'm comfortable doing it. Um, I would recommend reading um, a couple different books. Chris Fox's um, 5,000 Words a Day. And uh, I should have written it down. But there's another one, uh, 2K to 10K. Can't remember the author's name. I'll, I'll link it in the um, at the end of the video, or not not in the video, but you know below the video. Um, those two books are huge. And then for outlining, um, I've read a lot of different outlining books uh, lately. I've enjoyed uh, Libby Hawker's "Take Off Your Pants," which has been useful. Um, all of James Scott Bell's outlining books and and just writing books in general have been super useful. Um, and a couple of people use uh, I think it's Robert McKee's story, which I have found useful, even though it's a dense tome, and um, there have been times I just don't have the patience to get through it. So, um, But ultimately, uh, Libby's um, Take Off Your Pants is pretty darn accessible, and in fact, you're going to see, if you're familiar with it at all, you're going to see echoes of it here in just a moment once I finally get around to pulling my, um, my documents up. So that's a, a very long-winded um, explanation of where I'm at right now as far as writing what my basic process is, you know, going from the digital voice recording to the Neo and then into Scrivener. Um, I should emphasize that uh, I, I don't necessarily outline a book in like a couple hours or a weekend. There's, there's, a, whole process, there's a whole thought process of um, opening up the funnel and, and dumping in data, whether it's um, I, I read an awful lot, so I'm, I'm reading a lot of books, I'm watching a lot of movies, a lot of television, I, I love movies and television, um, I'm listening to a lot of music, particularly particularly um, movie and television soundtracks, and um, and I'm constantly thinking of ideas, and I'm I'm walking my neighborhood and just seeing things and trying to figure out how things work and why things work and asking questions about people and conversations and just what you know all this life stuff, right? So all that goes into the funnel and it, it, it um, rolls around in the brain, and eventually ideas will start percolating. And that's where I use the voice recorder to start putting some of these ideas down into some sort of format that's useful. And then, um, 
eventually, you know, gradually over, you know, weeks and months and years even, um, it starts condensing further down to the point where I've actually got something workable. So uh, I, it, I'm not the type of writer who can just um, sit down with a blank piece of paper and, and uh, churn out a story. You know, and I, churn, I don't mean churn in a negative um, connotation. I'm just saying, you know, sitting down and writing from a blank page is not something I've been very good at. Um, I did practice last year because I took a workshop with Dean Wesley Smith that was very valuable um, about writing into the dark and also listened to his lecture on it. And um, it's just, I, I guess I'm just not there yet as a writer. Um, my skill set doesn't lend me to um, to just making something up and running with it. I, I need a little bit, a little bit more structure than that. And I've found that as a writer, that structure um, really increases my productivity and my speed when I sit down to do sprint writing. So with all that being said, um, I'm going to uh, go ahead and, uh, and start putting my outline and my notes together. So what I've got is I've got a Word document here, and uh, I don't feel too shy about sharing this. But uh, So this is a Word document, and this Word document is a distillation of probably three weeks worth of voice recordings that I've taken. And you'll see there's just a lot of little bits and pieces of ideas in here, uh, keywords I'm going to use uh, for the product description on uh, Amazon. Uh, some notes about the main character, supporting cast, locations, uh, how the magic in the city. I'm working on an urban fantasy series, so the how the magic works, um, series themes, sample text, book one ideas, future story ideas, just you know, so on and so forth. And um, as I was mentioning, uh, Libby Hawker's "Take Off Your Pants." Um, through that, she discusses a, um, an, a a way to outline, and I agree with it. For the most part, there's some pieces of it that I don't really agree with, and then and that they it's not that I, I don't agree with them; it's just they don't work for me. Like uh, you know, she talks about doing uh, numbering one through five, and then you know, adding a flaw, an ally theme, and then the opening scenes and different events and stuff. And then she kind of leaves number four blank. She kind of says number four is actually all this other stuff combined, which you know doesn't you know. I I, <laughs> I wrote it in dumb place for a number, but uh, th this is not a uh, a negative on Libby's uh, process at all. I think it's a really good process and this helped me a lot um, kind of condensing my thoughts into how this book was gonna shape up and in fact you'll still see that there's some blanks here and like I said I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm about two days behind the actual completing of the outline um, which is why I may not start writing for another day or two but basically just as, as part of my process so um, I, I've gone from the digital voice recorder um, I've transcribed, transcribed the notes off the Neo, yeah, so, you know, I, I transcribed notes onto the Neo, I've taken the, the Neo documents and pulled them into Word. Uh, I don't normally do this, but just because I was working between my, uh, my work laptop and my home computer, um, I just, I didn't make the transition from the Neo directly to the, um, to the Mac, I guess. So we're just gonna, basically we're just gonna, um, let's see, cutting and pasting it would be pretty damn boring for you to see, but actually if we're gonna be looking at Scrivener, I guess this is an opportunity to do that too. So we're going to take this first chunk here and we're going to cut that. And we're going to hop over to Scrivener and uh, we are going to go to Plot Noodling. Actually, you know what? We're going to, we're going to duplicate this file. We're going to move that up to Plot Noodling. We're going to change this to various notes. We're going to go in here. And we're going to right-click, uh, can we right-click? We're still learning, still learning the intricacies of the Mac, so yes, here we go. Um, so we are going to right-click, turn my computer. The, uh, the rainbow spinner is interesting. Uh, why is it doing this? Okay. Oh, I got to hold it down, okay. So paste and match style. And there's all of my text. From the uh, uh, okay, and there's no need to duplicate the header, so there's just all that text. Um, and gosh, wouldn't it be nice if I could uh, uh, speed this up for you? But <laughs> I hate to make you sit here and just watch me cut and paste everything. Uh, so here is the main character. Let's grab all that. 
And, but you know what? This is the process. This is how it works, right? So uh, let's duplicate that. And we'll move that up to main character. And move that up to here. Her working name is Rachel. I think that's going to change, though. For now, I need something to plug in. And we'll paste it in that style. And we'll go up here. Delete all of this. Here. All right. I apologize in advance for my cold. I'm still getting over the worst of it. Um, now that my son is going to uh, daycare, he's bringing back all kinds of interesting uh, grossness. Uh, locations and sets. So I've got uh, one, two, three, four, five of those. And you know what we're actually going to do is we're going to come over here and I'm going to show you some Scrivener action. We're going to go to this. Uh, first of all, let me just get this out of the way here. I'm going to grab that. I'm going to pull this up here. And then we're going to turn that into a template file because this is the uh, as I showed in the first video this is my template I, I, I want all my um, text files to be set at courier new 12 point um, words with the target all that good stuff and uh, uh, here's a piece of Scrivener that's worth understanding is that um, it doesn't matter what it looks like here necessarily because when you get when you when you finish your document or your project or whatever whether it's a short story or a novel or whatever um, when you um, when you go to compile this in the in the compile settings, when we get there, you can change this to really anything you want. So that you can you know if you like to write in comics, you know what was it, Comic Sans? If you like to write in Comic Sans, twenty point you know blue text or purple text or you know whatever, if that's what you like to write in, you know in the in in the in your draft. Knock yourself out. Or do it anything you want. If you like uh, Lucida Black Letter or um, I don't know Trajan Pro, or if you like, uh, um, if you want to be bold and you know write everything in Impact Bold 60 point, you know, I, you know, no one's going to judge you. It doesn't matter, right? How, as long as you're getting words down, that's all that matters. So your your text files can be whatever font you want them to be. But when you get to the compile settings, that's where you're going to change it into something that's. Um, readable for whatever format, whether it's an ebook or a print book or whatever you end up doing afterwards. Anyway, so all that being said, so this is this is the template file I want to use. So now, anytime I need to plug a new file in here, I just go up here, I hit duplicate, and I can drag that puppy down to, uh, to here, and then I can hit duplicate, and then I can hit duplicate, and then I can hit duplicate, and then do it again. And I think I said there were five, were there five locations, right? Um, that initially one, two, three, four, five, yeah. Um, so we'll come back over here, and uh, I like the corkboard setting an awful lot. So I'm going to click on here, and I'll show you the corkboard setting that I talked about in the um, in the first book. And um, now in the PC version, you can actually change the background of this to make it look like a corkboard. I, I, I'm assuming I can do it here, but I don't see it obviously visible. I can change the icons, but uh, I'm not going to worry about it right now, but that's just something I, I can do if I wanted to. Um, and another piece of functionality for Scrivener, uh, if you don't like the corkboard, you can actually go to the outline mode. So you, if you look at group mode, there is um, uh, outliner, corkboard, and um, I think this is uh, uh, Scrivenings, which I don't like. I don't like the look of it. Uh, it's just it's just weird, so I don't like using it. I like I like the corkboard, and I like the outline. Now the outline is handy uh, because you can get a lot of information in here um, at a glance. And I'll show you all this real quick. Um, and you can you can customize these labels too. Uh, within the soft within the you can change what um, headings are visible. So you can you know if there's other data. And this is all customizable uh, in both, I think in both the PC and the Mac version, you can customize all of this stuff. So if you wanted like, uh, uh, if you wanted a, a label in here to be character, right? Like, like maybe you have three main characters that you're shuffling back and forth. If you don't want to use labels, then you can say, you know, this character, that character, this character, so on and so forth. Um, but for now, I'm just going to go with these because it's, uh, it's simple. So I'm going to rename these. So you click up here 
uh, in the outline anyway, um, to a group house. The main character lives in a group house. Uh, we'll click on this one, and we're going to change that to a police station because one of the one of the main characters is a cop. Uh, we'll change this to uh, the streets of. Uh, um, just call it the streets, because uh, this is going to be set in the uh, D.C. metro area. And so uh, Washington, D.C. and uh, all the local areas are going to be included in that. Um, what are the other ones? Streets of D.C. location. Oh, right. Um, uh, the hospice. The... Hospice, the main character's father, uh, grandfather li uh, lives in a hospice, is under hospice care. And uh, I know that at least for the first book, that'll be a, a location we'll see, a set we'll see a couple times. And then the, the other one is uh, various um, monuments. Oh, that's kind of dumb, isn't it? Um, uh, local sites and monuments. Because uh, the DC metro area is chock full of monuments and museums and all kinds of interesting places, so I'll probably go into more detail on those later. Um, so uh, let's talk a little bit more about Scrivener. And I'm going to switch over to Cork mode because that Cork board because that's just kind of like how I prefer. Um, every text document, every text document within a folder is customizable in that you can change the heading. You can also right click on it. You can assign a label to everything, and these labels are all, all um, modifiable. So in fact, I'm going to go ahead and modify these, because what I like to do, and you can uh, assign colors to them too, and you can do this in the PC version and the Mac version. Um, it may not look quite as pretty in the PC version, but you can do pretty much all this stuff. Um, I think I can edit these, yeah. So, um, let's see, so... I'm going to go with um, draft. Um, I don't remember all my categories. I have to create some new categories. Um, edited? No, wait, you know what? I'm, I'm going around. These are statuses, not labels. Um, so let's have one for the main character, uh, one for uh, Bello, because Bello, I know Bello is the police officer. And actually, um, we're going to change that to blue just because he's a cop and why not make it blue uh, so you can see you know you can change change the colors you can change the text of all these labels and you can add as many labels as you want delete them um, but anyway so once you've got these labels and you can name them you know I can add a new one called uh, uh, let's call it cubes that's one of the main character or that's one of the supporting characters um, MC's girlfriend, girlfriend. Um, okay, so what I like to do is use labels to show me that scene is going to be about that character, and uh, you know, uh, of course we aren't in, we aren't in, we aren't in scenes, but this is just an example. Uh, we want to turn that off, so we want to go to no label. Um, a better place to show you labels would be right here. Um, so book. So say chapter one is about is from the main character's point of view. So I would I would put that tag on there. And then as far as status, you can see that statuses are just like labels. You can have uh, to do, first draft, revised draft, final draft, title page done. You know, however you want to call them. I, I don't like you know done's kind of dumb um, in my brain. So I, I, I change these. I, in fact, I will change them because I, I need to go through my PC version and uh, find out what I was using for uh, pistols and pyramids. I had a slightly different uh, assortment of statuses. I'll have to dig those up and try to remember what I was using. But for now, we'll just we'll, we'll, we'll stick with this. Um, so we'll just hit OK. And what happens with the status labels is you can assign a status to a file. So let's call this status first draft. Uh, let's call this status first draft. Oh, interesting. So in the... In the um, labels, project properties, uh, this should be changed to uh, 
I guess my oh, because my wife is the uh, owns the computer. <laughs> Uh, let's see. So revised metadata. So status. Now that's interesting because now in the in the in the PC version, when you uh, add a status to something, it'll actually write it. It'll actually say on here, um, you know, a first draft revision, whatever. And it doesn't here now in the inspector. You can do this. You can do it over here in the inspector too if you want to. So if I'm on chapter two, I can assign this. Let's say that maybe this is from Bellow's point of view. And it's also a first, or maybe it's a revised draft or a final draft or whatever. Let's say it's a first draft, and let's say this is also a first draft. Even though I don't have any text there yet, right? Other than just the um, the sample text. Um, but so that's darn. I'm, I'm actually disappointed that this doesn't have the uh, the draft um, label on it. I'll have to figure out how I can do that because I, I really appreciate having the. Um, draft on there. Anyway, so if you go to the um, outline mode, you can see here's your chapter title, here's the label you assign to it, here's the status you assign to it, here's your word count. You can even change that within the outline. Um, and then you know, here's your word bar, and those word bars will change. You know, If you're in the document and you're chugging along on words and this, this bar down here changes to show where you are, that'll be reflected in the outline up here and so what will happen is at a glance, let's just, let's do a, a, for example here, let's say you're, you're trucking along. Um, and let's just throw a whole bunch of text in here, a couple carriage returns, blah, 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 blah. So you've got, you know, this is a 311 words. You got a little bit of uh, red heading into orange here. And uh, you look at the outline, you'll see, okay, well, you're, uh, your total target is 1,500 words. Your progress is this. In fact, we can probably change this to show the word count. There it is. And then we'll move that over to here because you can customize all this good stuff. And so here's, you can see at a glance, okay, you know, chapter one is from the main character's point of view. It's in first draft mode. I've gotten 300 words written. Total 1,500 is the target. Here's my progress bar. And so what happens is as you are um, let's see, does that work? No, let's not duplicate one of those. So now I've just done an example. Look, now I've got four chapters here. Um, and you can see, you know, you got these um, chapters. Now, just at, at a glance, you got all these extra chapters here. You can see, at a glance, you can see the progress of everything, where everything's going. So as you're working on a big document, you know, big. if you want a, just a snapshot of where your story is, you know, you might have, oh, well, a couple chapters are being revised, one's final, so on and so forth. You can sort these, you know, just like you would any any document, <clears throat> any uh, uh, spreadsheet, you know, I guess. You know, you look for progress. You can do all this all this great stuff with the with this outline mode. Now, in corkboard, you're not going to see that stuff because this is because these corkboards. Uh, here's a function that I haven't shown you, is that these these uh, index cards, you can you can change the Heading text, which will be reflected over here, but you actually you can actually go in here and say uh, first chapter introduce MC and the the world and so forth. Show the problem and hook the reader. From page one, paragraph one. You can do this in the PC version too, just so you know. Because um, I know some people were concerned about uh, um, the fact that I'm approaching this from the Mac version uh, versus PC, because I'm switching over to PC, or I'm switching over to Mac. But so far, all this functionality is available uh, on both. So in, in this text, is not going to appear anywhere except here. So, like when you when you go to like if you're looking at the so that's chapter one that's that's your index card. If you actually look at the chapter one text, it's the same thing as what it was before. So we're going to cut this because we don't need it. But then you go back to the outline, and that doesn't even show up. Oh, it does show up. Oh, interesting. So this is something that the Mac does that PC does not, is it shows you that uh, that text. That's kind of handy. 
Um, but anyway, so here's the that, and you can change. Uh, I'm not going to show you the functionality, but you can actually go through and change what font this displays in, what size that font is in. So you can really customize all of this to whatever you want it to be. Uh, so anyway, um, let's delete these. Move them to trash. So we'll go back to here. Um, all right. So let's duplicate that and move that down here. And there's a way to um, uh, to change the hierarchy on these files. Whoops. Whoops. I haven't quite figured out how to do it in the Mac yet, but um, there's a theoretically an easy way to move these um, these text files like back and forth and up and down the file structure, so that instead of dragging and dropping, you can actually use the keyboard to do it. I haven't quite figured out how to do that yet, but anyway, um, we're going to duplicate and duplicate and duplicate because what we're going to do. One. We're going to go back to our Word document, and this is where it gets into the um, uh, the Libby Hawker stuff, um, the the actual harder harder core outline, and I'm trying to think of the best way to do this. Um, and see, I'm, I'm learning as I'm going, and I'm hoping you're getting something out of this, but uh, we'll cut that, and we'll hit delete a couple times, just pull that up, and we'll come back over to Scrivener, and we will, oh, let's do this the hard way. So we will paste all that in there. All right, and so Libby Hawker based her outline process off of McKee's process outlined in story with some modifications and then I took it and I'm doing some modifications because uh, there is no one right way to do this. Every butcher makes their sausage a little bit differently. Every writer works a little bit differently. So uh, theoretically these would all be separate documents within Scrivener. So you've got the main character, the external goal, the antagonist, uh, we're going to just delete this because that's not relevant. Uh, main character flaw. In fact, we are going to pull that because that would fit very nicely right here with the main character. And we're just going to plug that down here. So we're just going to cut and paste that there. Uh, well, we were here at chapter one. So. Um, that line needs to come out, so we will pull that, and that's going to be a supporting character. So we need another copy of this, and we'll dump that in the supporting character. I'm going to change that to Malcolm for now, because he's that's the uh, working name for the ally. Although I guess I'm giving away the book here, but you know what? It's going to change, so... Enjoy it while it lasts. All right, so we'll just change that to gender three, four. Oops. And chapter six. This is just placeholders. All right, um, theme. All right, so opening scene, that's basically chapter one. I already pretty much covered that. Uh, whoops. Uh, edit, undo. Oh yeah, uh, undo, super handy. So let's go in here. Uh, oh, interesting, it doesn't quite work, okay. Anyway, uh, is, it a, is it a command? No, it's a 
control. There we go. So con holding down the control key and hitting uh, enter, or yeah, hitting the return key uh, affects the lines there. Um, oops, so we need to we need to trash those. A little bit of a little bit of scrivener screw up here. So inciting event. It's going to be chapter two. So we'll cut that. And then we'll go forward there. And chapter three. It's going to be that. There. Um, and so forth. And I'm not going to bore you by doing this for all of them. In fact, let me turn these uh, let me turn these labels off. And you would think, well, this doesn't really tell me anything. And you'd be absolutely right. Because this is where I was saying that I'm probably a day or two behind. Because what I need to do is now that I've got opening scene, inciting event, character realizes their external goal, you know, all these pieces from the outline, you know, display of flaw, display of flaw, drive for goal, so on and so forth. If you've read Libby's book, you'll understand what all this means. Um, but for the most part, it's, it's basically the three-act structure broken down into uh, specific chunks that have to happen. Um, I don't know that I would necessarily refer to them as these, because I, I tend to outline a little differently, but um, not too much differently. This is pretty much how I'm, how I'm rolling now. And it helped, like I said, it helped a lot to, to get my thoughts organized. Um, but anyway, so I'm not going to bore you with all this cutting and pasting. Um, but essentially, essentially, what I'm doing here is uh, I'm, I'm building the, the skeleton of the story here, right? So chapter one, this is what chapter one is going to be about. Chapter two, you know, I'm going to get to this. Although actually the inciting event will probably be in chapter one. Because uh, I, need, I need to start as early as possible. Because you got to hook the reader, right? You gotta give the the reader a reason to care about this main character, and uh, in this day and age, walking to the walking to the story and making the readers wait to chapter two to find out what's going on is just you're taking too long. You gotta give it to, you gotta give it to him early and often. Um, so that's why I say first chapter he's got to introduce the main character in the world and the setting, show what's happening. Um, so anyway, so uh, as we continue to roll along. These chapters will, there'll, there'll be more cha chapter cards. You know, this other stuff will be like, built along. Now, something you can do with Scrivener is that I like to have the draft novels down here within the series Bible. What you could do is you could have this up in the manuscript. So the manuscript is going to be where you um, um, put all the files that are going to be compiled into your ebook or print book or whatever. And what I tend to like to do is I like to keep everything down here in the series Bible, write it, write it, write it. And then when it comes time to compile, what I do is I, um, uh, where is it? Here we go. We're going to duplicate that, which duplicates the entire thing, right? There's the entire thing. There's a copy of it. We're going to drag that entire thing up here to manuscript. And now what that happens then is I've got a complete copy. I've got an exact copy of the entire book here and here. And so if I'm, if I'm revising anything up here, um, and getting ready for the uh, the compile. If I screw something up, I know I've got a backup copy. And I think there's also a way to do other forms of backing up and making snapshots of stuff, but I'm not going to get into that right now. Uh, but anyway, so here's all the pieces that I'm going to compile, and I've got a backup of it, and then when I'm done, I can either just delete this, or um, if I'm feeling really confident about Scrivener not crashing on me, which, you know, for the PC version, it never crashed on me. I've never had a problem with it. Um, I know some people have had problems with uh, Scrivener crashing and, and losing documents, but there are so many redundant redundancies built into Scrivener that the likelihood of you actually losing any content, pretty remote. Um, I won't say it can't happen because I know it has happened, but um, to other people. Um, but Scrivener is really built to be writer friendly and part of being writer friendly is not losing your content because you know we've all been there we've all had those days where we've spent hours and hours and hours writing stuff and then word crashes on us or word burps or whatever and all that content is gone and you're just like crying into your tea because all that hard work is gone right anyway so um so what have we done? We've talked about outlining. I've shown you some of the functionality. I, I don't know. This video may not be all that useful for you, but uh, I hope it has been useful to some extent. Um, I think 
I'm not going to bore you doing more cutting and pasting. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to shut this video off here. I'm going to continue to pull all these notes into my Scrivener file, and then maybe I'll come back with a third video showing you the uh, the results. I'll, I'll update my labels and statuses to what I like to use. I'll look into seeing if I can make it so that the... Uh, I'm really disappointed that the statuses don't appear on the um, on the card. I'm kind of kind of bummed about that. I, I love the fact that the, that the labels appear in the corners. That's just like the PC version. But um, I really want the status to be on the card because I like looking at a glance and seeing that. But I guess I may just have to start getting used to the outline view. Um, and I wonder if there's a way to minimize... Nope, I guess not. Maybe not. Um, anyway. Any other functionality I want to show you here? So corkboard, outline mode. Uh, if you don't use the uh, inspector, you can just shut it off. That gives you a little bit of more screen real estate. And as, uh, uh, here's some quick on the corkboard. You can actually change the layout of the corkboard. You can change the card size if you want. Like if you are a a young go-getter with better eyes than mine, you can uh, make the text smaller or you can make them bigger. So you can you can change the, the layout there. You can change the ratio of the size, card sizes, 5x5, five 4x5, five, 3x5. Five, five. You can change the spacing in between cards if you want to tighten it up or uh, make it a little bit wider. Nice tight layout there. Uh, number of cards across. Keyword chips. I'm not sure what that is. You can use a smaller font if you want. Uh, I certainly don't because uh, as the eyes get older, you want to uh, be able to see a little bit better. Uh, and then you got, uh, what is this? Uh, oh, you can, uh, you can, yeah, I deorder them or make them nice and tidy in a grid. I like a grid, so nice and tidy. And then again, if you pop this, the inspector on, it pulls this up, and then you've got this other content here. Um, so the inspector is basically just a place where you can put a whole lot more content and keywords and tags and images and just all kinds of cool stuff. You can even jot down notes to yourself here. Like, uh, hey, I'm... Hey, does this layout even make sense? And those notes don't appear anywhere except for right here. Um, so, like, if you're in the outline mode, maybe you can see them. Corkboard. Um, I tend not to use the inspector. So usually I turn it off because I like to have that extra screen real estate. And then, of course, uh, for the corkboard. And then when I get to the actual manuscript, um, it just stretches out. It just stretches out to the end of the page so that it's just nice and tidy. I've got the binder material over here on the left, and then I've got all the uh, all the content here. In fact, I bet, um, I wonder, no, I think the binder's glued to that side. I don't know if you can move it to the right if you wanted to. But uh, There's also a full screen mode. Uh, for writing, if you want to use it, I don't remember the might be uh, view. Uh, so if you wanted to go into Scrivener and see nothing except the blank page, you can uh, you can do that. Um, I don't like to do it uh, in enter full screen. Yeah, probably enter full screen. And so all you're seeing. Oh no, that's uh, that's not that's not it. That's a Mac thing. Anyway, so uh, inspector on or off. You know, if you want to use it. Like I said, there's a great amount of detail here that you can add to your um, file, but I don't use it, so I'm going to turn it off. And then uh, all this other good stuff. So I think that's all I'm going to talk about now. I think that pretty much covers my outlining process, although not very well because I'm still doing some cutting and pasting. So hopefully this video makes some sort of sense, and I hope you got something out of it. We're going to um, always, always save your work and uh, minimize it. And so I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, uh, don't hesitate to drop a comment after the video or on my website, send me an email. Uh, I hope this was useful to you and uh, have a great afternoon and happy writing.